Hey, I'm Pastor Brian. So glad that you are checking out the sermon this week. Whether you worship here regularly and are catching up on a service that you missed, or you're watching to learn more about us as a church, your family, so welcome home. Before we get started, I'd invite you to check in with us by scanning the QR code on the screen or by clicking the link in the description below. Now, let's check out this week's message. Our society encourages us to accumulate, to chase after more possessions, more wealth, more distractions, and more success. We find ourselves lost in a sea of excess, disconnected from the true source of joy and contentment. When is enough enough? What if we have more happiness, more freedom, more presence, more health, and more faith? Good morning. Hey, let's, let's, let's start different today. You ready? How many people want to play a game? Wow, well, don't get so excited all at once. I mean, you know, somebody's like, I just sat down. Well, stand back up. We're going to play a game. Everybody's going to play a game. Here we go. We're going to stand up. Ready? Here we go. We're going to play a game. In just a minute, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to ask you to point in a given direction. Now, be careful. You're going to hit somebody in the back of the head, or you're going to poke somebody in the eye, or, or do something like that, okay? So just be careful. Maybe you just want to point like this, or this, or this, whatever, whichever way, okay? Close your eyes. Everybody in the room. It's all good. Nobody's going to do anything weird. Close your eyes. Seriously, I see you. Keep your eyes are open. Stop it. Close your eyes. Here's what you're going to do. Ready? I need you to point north. Go. Point which way's north. Which way's north. Go. Now, open your eyes. Keep your hands up. Look around the room. Look around the room. How many people? Are, look, at, look at this. This is amazing. This is north. I cheated. I have it on my compass. It's right here. Let me get it back to where it is, and it's that way. That's how many people got it right? Great. How many people got it wrong? Okay, sit down. <laughs> here's the point. Here, here's why we did this. Here's why we did this. You knew instantly, like there was somebody who just you meant well. I mean, you did, right? Like here's the here's the great here's the great. Which way's north? I just wanted somebody to like. Well, like on a map, it's up. Like you just want to point up, you know. Okay. Nobody, I don't think anybody did that, but anyway, right? Maybe you did. Oh, you, did you do that? No, I'm just kidding. Um, the, the point in doing that is simple. You meant well, and you thought you were right, and, and you, or you just took your best guess, but, but nobody gets to make up which way is north. Like, we know which way north is, right? Like, we just figured it out. I'm still looking at my compass. It's this way. This is north. That's north. So if somebody came up to you and asked you, uh, hey, can you tell me how to get wherever, and it was north, you wouldn't go, oh, yeah, it's back that way. Unless you intentionally just wanted to send them off on a wild goose chase. So you meant well in whichever way you were pointing. You thought you knew well. And so the, here, here's, here's the thing. You don't get to make up what's true. So spiritually speaking, we don't get to make up what's true. Fortunately for us, there is a true north. There is a true north for us, scripturally, biblically, right? It's the life of Jesus, and it's the teachings that we have preserved for us in the word of the living God, yeah? Right, okay, all right. So, so, so this is good. Remember what Jesus even said about himself. He said this. This is in John chapter 14, verse 6. He said this. I am the way, what? The, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. That's exactly right. So what I would tell you is to the extent that we disagree with the word of God, we might actually be wrong, right? And so in that regard, what we have a responsibility to do is to act on the truth in our life in every area of our life. So we have, a, we, have, we have an obligation, a responsibility, if you will, to act on the truth in our life relationally, uh, in our parenting, uh, in, 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 at work, and yes, even in the way in which we handle and spend things like money. Money and debt. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I know, aren't you glad you came to church? <laughs> Somebody's going, oh man, I came to church on the day you're talking about the thing. Hi, good morning. 
My name is Jeff, and I'm the senior pastor here at Church on the Hill. We're really glad that you're with us. This is our back to, back to school series, and it's called The More of Less. Let me give you the idea of the series in one sentence. The world says get more. God says hold up. Do you really need more? Actually, what you might need more of is the more of less. And so that's what we're talking about. And so we're talking about a number of things that the world says you need and you need more of or, or that we have. And maybe what we really need is a little bit less of, of that, more of Jesus. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to dive in today and we're going to talk about this idea about money. Because I don't know about you. I'm just going to be honest. I didn't have anybody really to teach me when I was younger about the biblical purpose of money. And so that's what we're really going to unpack today. And so we're going to dive into it. Some of, some of this, some of y'all, you've already got this. And this is going to be very familiar territory. But for, there's going to be somebody in the room who's going to go, man, I, I never thought of it that way or I didn't know that or whatever. So, so listen, here's what we say here on the Hill. You're going to love 70% of everything we do. Remember us telling you that? And you know what that means? That means if you, if you don't like something, guess what? If you're living in the 30% that you don't like, it's somebody else's 70. Okay? So who knows what this message is going to wind up like, but we're going to leave that in the hands of the Lord. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the day that you've given us the privilege to be in your house. Wow, Lord, worship. So good. Thank you, God, for the team that does that and leads us uh, to your throne. We're blessed. Speak to us. Come, Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. So I think sometimes what we really need, like I said, I didn't have anybody really teach me. I just need a, a, a different perspective or a, a paradigm shift in terms of the way in which I understand and think about uh, financial matters. And so to show you, to illustrate a paradigm shift, here's what I want you to see. I want you to see this first sentence. Ch- take a look at this. Not that one. This one. That's it. Read that. No, not out loud. Okay, you can read that one way, right? Some of the ladies are like, "Mm, I don't know about that. You could read it this way. Mm, You're like, okay, that changes it a little bit. Or you could read it this way. (laughs) Punctuation changes everything, doesn't it? Right? It really does. It really does. Did the words change? No. The words didn't change. What changed was the way in which you understood the words, right? And so this is, this is this idea. So what we really need when it comes to this notion of finances is we need God's perspective. And that really, punctuation, that's what it does. It just changes the whole perspective, and it's how we understand this. And so what we need is we need a paradigm shift in terms of understanding what, what is it that God really wants us to do with his money. And yes, I called it his money. Because over and over again, all throughout the scripture, and again, that's going to be our baseline. That's going to be true north, and we're going to anchor ourselves back to what the word says. Well, in that regard, here, here's, here's what the scripture says about who owns everything. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14 says this, look, the highest heavens and the earth and everything in it all belong to who? Right. So not only do we need this new perspective, we definitely need God's perspective and the perspective offered by scripture, it's it's not really new, you know? I mean, it really is. It's like thousands of years old. It's actually rather ancient. Uh, The writer of Hebrews, or not Hebrews, I'm sorry, Proverbs says this in Proverbs 22. The rich, ah, read this one with me. The rich rules over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. Listen, gang, when you are in debt financially, like up to your eyeballs, this is what it feels like. It feels like slavery. It feels like you can't catch your breath. and You can't catch a break because you're just being chased after, if you will, by creditors, right? And so, in fact, Scripture talks about this in this slavery mentality. This is the language found throughout the Scripture. In fact, it talks about when we are in financial debt. It talks about ideas of slave. It even uses the word fool, and it even sometimes mentions the idea of a curse. Now, just so that we're clear, most of us in the room, in some way or another, are carrying some type of debt. 
right? Like you've got credit card debt, you've got a car payment, you have a mortgage, you're carrying school loans, whatever it is, you just sent your kid off to college, and so now you're paying for their college, right? You're doing all these things, and here's the good news. Fortunately, this isn't a salvation issue, right? Like Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us even if we're in debt to Wells Fargo or Chase or Kohl's, or Target, right? Whatever it is, he still loves us, and, and, that's, and, that's, and that's good. How many people in the room remember the very first time you got your first credit card? Remember that? Yeah. They, they sent it to me. Like, I didn't ask for it. It just showed up in the mail. I was like, score, you know? I mean, who gives an 18-year-old who has no common sense, Jeff, a credit card? Like, at that point, my attitude was like, yeah, I got money. I got this plastic thing right here, right? So, consequently, because no one really taught me about finances, you know what I did? I charged almost everything. I mean, anybody who kind of took that thing, yeah, I did. And, and, and it, was, it was not pretty. Here's the point. You can wander into debt, but you rarely wander out of debt, Right? Because breaking the chains, and that's what it is. It's this whole chain-breaking image. You know, you go, oh, that's kind of like spiritual debt, spiritual slavery. Yes, absolutely. Because Jesus is the one who paid the greatest sin debt. Amen, church? Yeah, but, but also when, when, it's, when it's applied to your financial life, the point is, is it just takes work. It takes hard work to get out of debt, right? And you know what debt does? It creates this sense of a gravitational pull. And do you know how you get out of a gravitational pull? you got to expend energy. you got to expend energy to get out of it. In fact, you almost need, um, and I just read it for you, it's that passage out of, out of Proverbs, you need gazelle-like intensity. And, and let's go back to it. Proverbs chapter 6, here's what the writer says again. My child, if you've put up security for a friend's debt or agreed to guarantee the debt of a stranger, if you've trapped yourself, Notice this language. By your agreement, are caught by what you said. Follow my advice and save yourself. Catching this language? Listen to these verbs. For you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Now swallow your pride. Go and beg to have your name erased. Don't put it off. Do it now. Don't rest until you do. Read this last line with me. Save yourself like a gazelle escaping from a hunter, like a bird fleeing from a net. You ever watch the, the National Geographic channel or maybe Disney and that stuff or, or Discovery Network and you've seen like the uh, cheetahs trying to catch a gazelle? You, you, you ever watch that stuff? Any, no, Jeff, just you? Great. Okay, thanks. Yeah, right. Okay, way to go, friend. Yeah, no, those are cool shows. I kind of like that stuff. Fastest land animal on earth, but it will only catch a gazelle on average one out of every 19 times. Do you know why? Motivation. Right? Think about it. I mean, it's motivation. Like, the gazelle, I mean, cheetah goes, I'm hungry. I'm looking for lunch. The gazelle goes, I got to run for my life, right? And that's, and that's the same level of intensity that it's going to take for you sometimes to get out of debt. It's going to take this expenditure of energy and effort on your part. You got to work hard at getting out of debt. You got to, I mean, you got to do the things that are absolutely necessary. Dave Ramsey says it like this. If you're willing to live like no one else, then one day you can live like no one else. So, like I said, when it comes to money, nobody taught me. I didn't get it. But God's Word tells us that we kind of need to be converted to the way that He thinks. Yeah? You know why? Which way's north? Point, point away. Which way's north? Right. Now look around the room. Everybody knows which way it is. It's this way. Actually, it's that way right there. There it is right there. That's north. So, so, here, so here's, here's what I'm going to do in the time that I've got left. I'm going to walk you through. What's, what's the function of money? Biblically speaking, why does God want you to have money other than the fact that a, you need it, okay, and B, you want it. There's got to be more reasons than that. So let's lay the basics out. Ready? Here it is. Number one, it's going to provide for your needs. Yeah, I know. There's a duh factor in that. Right. But, but, this, but this is what we said last week. We, we said that God is the one who's going to provide for our needs. God gives us our daily what? bread, right? That's that prayer that we pray, give us this day, our daily bread, and that's what God's going to do. He's going to provide for us. But what we also said last week is there's the necessity for us to determine our needs versus our 
wants exactly. And sometimes when we do that, and sometimes God, when we know what we need, God's going to provide it, then sometimes God gives us, actually, he does give us our wants. All the time? No, not all the time, but sometimes. So here in Proverbs, again, the writer tells us in verse twenty, in chapter 25, verse 28, these words, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. This is why you don't need to chase after just these unnecessary desires. When you're sitting there on your phone late at night and you're seeing the thing and you're clicking the thing and you're like, oh, that's great. Oh, it's on sale. Wow, it's 48% off. This is amazing. This is great. No, again, just me. Okay, great. Yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. So, so the best thing that you can do, the best thing that you can do is do this. Create a budget. Sit down, look at everything that's coming in, create a budget. This is going to be your spending plan. This is how God wants you to spend his money. We'll talk a little bit more about it. Somebody goes, I'm not sure I really need a budget. Why do I need a budget? Here's why. No one told me when I was younger, why do I need a budget? I'll tell you why. Because if you don't tell your money where to go, you'll wonder where your money went. You just will. There's, there's a time coming when you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I thought we had more money left and you've got more months that, you know, left. No, a budget brings simplicity back into your financial world so that you can better provide for your needs. Because chasing after empty wants is empty and it will bring your city, to stay with that same language, to financial ruin. It just will. And so, and, and, and you know this. Do you know why? You know it because the bills come due. Like every month with great regularity. When it comes in the mail or it hits your inbox or whatever it is, there's some notification that tells you you've got a payment that's due. And then you've opened it up. And have you ever, anybody ever bought anything and then later regretted it? You've had buyer's remorse. Anybody? Yeah, everybody has. We all have at some point in time. So uh, just imagine, think about it for a sec. What would happen if you decided now? In August, that you weren't going to use your credit card come Christmas. And instead, you bought Christmas with just cash. Here's what I think would happen. In mid-January, you wouldn't wake up with a case of the January oh no's. Right? Like when the bill comes due in mid-January, you're oh no. Why did we do that thing? Money. What's it good for? It provides for your needs. Sometimes your wants. It'll provide for your needs. Number two, money also helps us to prepare for trouble. Because financial setbacks are common. I mean, they just are. You know, it's going to happen. Money Magazine did a survey, and they found that 78% of people experience a major financial setback in 10 years. House burned to the ground, uh, had to buy a new car, uh, job loss, uh, major illness, something along those lines, right? Here's what, okay, so that's, that's, that's what Money Magazine reveals. Here's what Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 33. He says, here on earth you'll have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I've overcome the world. What I would say is when Money Magazine and Jesus of Nazareth agree, you probably need to sit up and take notice. Like something's there, you know? And so, 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 so here's, let's go back to Dave Ramsey. He's smart. Some people like Dave, some don't. I love him. I think he's smart. Here's what Dave would tell you to do. If you have never done anything, Dave, here's Dave's simple step right here. First thing you need, you need a $1,000 emergency fund. That's your first baby step automatically. $1,000 emergency fund. Here's why there's an unexpected thing coming your way. You, you don't know what it is. It's just going to show up. It, it showed up yesterday, literally. Gay and I, we were going to Target, had to make an errand. We had to go get some stuff. Walked out in the garage, got in the car, pushed the button to start the car, and it just clicked. I was like, ooh, that's not good. So what did I do? I pushed the button again, like it's going to change. Like, you know, like, no, no, sorry, that was an error. Nope. Pushed the thing again. What did it do? It clicked again. I was like, ah, oh, great. Car didn't start. You know, later on, I try to jump the car off, and that didn't work. And I'm like, dang it, is it an alternator? Is this a starter? I'm sitting here, I'm looking at Google. I'm trying to figure out the thing. And I was just so frustrated. I was like, stupid car, you know? And I was just irritated. I really was. And then we were sitting there, and, and, and she said this. Later on, she, we were sitting there on the couch, and she said, um, she goes, well, at least we have the money. And I said, yeah, I know. I didn't want to spend it, right? But that's what the $1,000 emergency fund is. 
With inflation, maybe it's 2,000. But anyway, the point is, right? Like, who knows, right? Like, see, but you get the idea. You, you, gotta, put, you gotta put it away because you're gonna need it. You're gonna need it. Later that night, I went to bed and I was like, kind of praying beforehand. I was like, Lord, I don't appreciate being the living object lesson for this point in the sermon tomorrow, you know? But nevertheless, it's whatever. So baby step number one, $1,000 emergency fund. The second thing is this, Dave would say, and that saved three to six months worth of living expenses. Because God forbid, man, what happens if, if you do lose your job? If, there, if there's major hospitalization, something comes along? Goodness gracious, you, you, you need this. Now here's the thing. There's somebody sitting in the room today, and you're sitting there, and you're going, we're good. You're good. This is no problem. You've got this covered. And then some, maybe. Praise the Lord. And then there's some of you sitting here, and you're like, oh, no. This is not good. So, so, so here's the question. When's the right time to start? Now. <laughs> you start today. Here's why. Because one year from now, you'll wish you had started today. Okay, so that's the right time to begin. And so when you begin to do these things, you begin to take these simple steps early on, then it's going to lead you to number three, and now you're going to be able to eliminate debt. Now you begin to get into this thing, and the first thing you're going to do, man, tackle that high-interest consumer debt. Dave Ramsey calls it the debt snowball. You take the $300, and you apply it to the lowest debt that you've got and whatever, and you pay off your Kohl's card, and that's great. And you take that along with whatever else you were kind of throwing at it, and you create more, and you add that to the next one, and you add that to the next one. And finally, eventually, you're paying off your car. And maybe eventually, one day, you could even get to the point you're paying off the house. And then you're saving and that's amazing because here's, it's actually a biblical idea. Here's what Jesus says in Luke chapter 14. Suppose someone wants to build a tower. Won't he sit down first and figure out how much it will cost? Then he will see whether he has enough money to finish it. Suppose he starts building, he's not able to finish. Then everyone who sees what he has done will laugh at him. They will say, read this with me, this fellow started to build, but he wasn't able to finish. Right. So what's this mean practically? Because we're trying to be very practical uh, in, in life today. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. We got to learn how to live below our means. You make this amount of money, you don't live up here. Now you're in debt. This is upside down. Right. You don't want to, if you make this amount of money, you don't want to live right here. Okay. Because now you're a paycheck away from bankruptcy. That's bad. Okay. So what do you need to do? You need to make this much money, you need to live down here. You need to live below your means. So here's the ratio, right? The ratio is 10, 10, 80. That's it. That's your ratio. That means you're going to save 10%, you're going to give 10%, and you're going to live on 80%. That's the ratio. So that, that right there, that, that is your saving plan, that is your giving plan, and that is your spending plan. And that's it. And that's the 80%. That's your budget. Because again, like I said, if you don't tell your money where to go, you'll wonder where it went. And then ultimately, one day when you begin to do all these things and you're putting this in, in, in process and you're saved more and you'll, you don't have to save as much and life will be good. And then guess what you'll do? Then God, here's the last purpose, I think, of money. And that's so that we can be radically generous. This is what we're trying to be. So we're going to save for the future. That's beautiful. But now, eventually, once we've gotten all that out of the way, then God says, hey, now you can be radically generous. This is, I think, one of the primary reasons that disciples of Jesus need to learn how to control our spending and save for emergency and set aside for long-term needs and do all that kind of stuff, get debt out of the way, so that now you will be blessed to be a blessing. And, and, and that's what God's calling you to. In Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 7, it says this, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward the poor, which just simply is a reminder that every one of us, if you name the name of Jesus Christ, you're blessed. You're blessed to be a blessing. And so here's the way that I think we, we don't want to walk through life. You don't want to walk through life like this. You don't want to walk through life tight-fisted. Instead, you want to walk through life open-handed. And you want to be able to, to give where the need moves your heart. You want to give to those that, that need it. You want to be able to, to, to be an answer to somebody else's prayer. And so I want to keep, you want to keep, hopefully, we want to keep our lives so aligned with God's Word financially so that we can respond to when opportunities come our way. And so as a result, you know, you know what happens? God is the provider, and you know what we are? 
We're just the conduit. That's all we are. And so God's resources flow to us so they can flow through us, right? That's it. That's the idea. God's resources, everything comes from God. He owns everything. That, 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 that right away, I mean, that will solve a whole lot of our problems when we realize who owns everything. So God's resources flow to us so that they can flow through us. So here's the point. Which way is north again? Remind me, which way? It's that way. That's north. That's north, right? So we don't get to make up which way is north. Calling east north doesn't make it north. It just means you're going to get lost if you follow those directions, right? And here's what that means. That means we've got to live our life according to the true north of Scripture. And debt, my good friend, will squeeze the life out of you. It is literally slavery. And, 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 and friend, I would just say that God has a better plan for your life. He just does. Again, we'll go back to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. That's because debt will wear you down. It will squeeze the life out of you. And, and listen, here's what you need to ask yourself. You need to ask yourself this question. Why would you want to live your financial life like the rest of the world when the rest of the world doesn't seem to be doing so well? When instead you could actually live your life like God's Word tells you to live your life financially and we would be way better off because which way is north? that way and that's the true north right so is it going to take work to get out of debt absolutely it'll take gazelle-like intensity it will is it going to be worth it yes when you pay off your school loans absolutely pay off that credit card you better believe it stop putting chick-fil-a on your credit card yeah that that would probably be good too right it will it will be worth it it really will be so 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 here's again we're trying to be really practical in this series so, so here, here's the application point, and there's a lot of application in this. This week, as we kind of go into the minimalist challenge, it's going to be different. How many people how many people have been decluttering this past week? Oh, yeah. Got a picture. Somebody sent me a picture the other day. Uh, yesterday, in fact, they sent me a picture, showed their hallway with all their stuff, kind of, you know, in the hallway, and it just said, your fault. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> love it, you know? It was awesome. It was, it was hilarious. I loved it. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you're doing it. So this week, hey, here's what I want to tell you. This week, you're going to get it again. If you haven't, you, you can sign up. That's all you got to do right there. Scan the QR code, sign up, 6 a.m. You're going to get the GPS. It's a short scripture. I told you it was going to be short. You're like, whoa, one verse. That's just really short. Yeah, one verse. And then there's an action. Hit it. Do it. And, and, and it's going to get a little harder because now we're moving into the financial world. But I promise you, if we will begin to do the things that Scripture talks about, life will be so much better. So one last question. I'm done. Ready? Here's the question I want you to wrestle with. Carry this into the week. What could the people of God do for the kingdom of God if we didn't have any payments? You know what I think the answer is? Anything God wants us to do. Thanks for checking out this week's sermon. If you haven't already, we'd love for you to join us in person at either our 9.30 a.m. traditional service or our 11 a.m. contemporary service. Our desire is to help people worship, grow, and serve together as we become disciples of Jesus Christ. So next time you come into worship, swing by our connect table, say hey to me, Pastor Jeff. You'll get to meet some of us, and we just hope that you have a great week. And we'll see you soon here on The Hill.